1883 Kapstadt. Der schottische Bauernsohn James McGregor ist um die halbe Welt gereist, um in Südafrika sein Glück zu suchen. In den Diamantenfeldern im Norden des Landes. In Clipdrift, dem Mittelpunkt des Schürfgebietes, lernt er durch die schöne Margaret, deren Vater, den Gemischtwarenhändler Salomon van der Merve kennen. Dieser gibt James einen Kontakt als gleichberechtigten Partner und verschafft ihm eine Schürfausrüstung. Nach wochenlangem Suchen ist die Entbehrung endlich von Erfolg gekrönt. Er findet Diamanten. Als reicher Mann, wie er glaubt, kommt James nach Clipdrift zurück. Doch Salomon verweigert ihm seinen Anteil an den Diamanten. Ein Mann namens Schmidt lockt James in einen Hinterhalt, wo man ihn zusammenschlägt. Doch von dem Neger Banda wird er gerettet und gesund gepflegt. James' Gesicht ist jedoch völlig verändert. James freundet sich mit Banda an. In der Wüste Namib wühlen James McGregor und sein schwarzer Freund Banda mit den Händen im Sand und finden zahlreiche Diamanten. Sie finden auch einen riesigen Stein. Dieser ist zwar wertlos, aber er wird zum Symbol ihrer Freundschaft und ihres späteren Erfolges. Als die Wächter des Diamantenfeldes sich nähern, rettet sie ein plötzlich aufkommender Nebel. Sie hören nur deren Zurufe. Krüger brennt. Im Lager geben sie sich als Arbeitssuchende aus. Sie werden zurückgewiesen. Endlich sind sie frei. Doch nun trennen sich die Freunde. Banda will zurück zu seinen Landsleuten und James nach Clip trifft, um sich an Salomon van der Merve für den Verrat zu rächen. Als reicher Mann kommt James unter dem Namen Mr. Travis nach Clip trifft zurück. Weder Salomon van der Merve noch dessen Tochter Margaret erkennen ihn. Auch nicht Mr. Schmidt, der ihn überfallen hat. Salomon möchte mit diesem reichen Mr. Travis Geschäfte machen und lässt es sogar zu, dass seine wohlbehütete Tochter mit ihm ausgeht. James verführt sie und sie wird schwanger. Doch er denkt nicht daran, sein Eheversprechen zu halten. Van der Merve ist über die Schande entsetzt, die seine Tochter über ihn gebracht hat. Voller Wut, dem Irrsinn nahe, erschießt er Schmidt, weil dieser alles gewusst hat. Dann richtet er die Waffe gegen sich selbst. Margaret bleibt weinend am Grab ihres Vaters zurück. Come back tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh. We're closed. It's only eight o'clock. Come on, boys. Tomorrow's another day. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Yeah. I said move. Ah, come on, you Oh, come on, come on. 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 Well, Millie, we're just going to have to do this ourselves. It's all right, dear. You're going to be all right. Oh. That's it. That's the girl. Come on. Breathe. Push. Push. Good girl. Come on, Millie. There. Come on, push. Push. That's it. Come on. One more big push. Right. Go. Push. Good girl. That's it. Painters out of here as soon as possible. I notified the construction foreman and he informed me that. Well, I was promised to be gone by the weekend. Agnes, what the devil are you doing here? I came to tell you you have a son, Mr. McGregor. He was born last night, and Maggie has decided to name him after you, Jamie. I don't care what she calls it. As far as I'm concerned, he's a bastard. You can tell her that. James McGregor has no son. Hello, baby. 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 H
stretches 10 miles down the coast. The beach itself is played out by now. And the diamonds are being mined back along those hills. Sir? Something wrong? I think the dogs are out. Come on, Mac. I want to see the superintendent. Labor problems? We've got no labor problems here. I'm told the workers would prefer to have the landmines removed then, time. Excuse me. But the day you start worrying about what these bloody kaffirs want, that is the day this place starts losing money. Take out the landmines. Sir? I said take them out. Yes, sir. Hey, 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 you! Who's this man? He's a thief, sir. We caught him trying to make his way in from the sea. Throw him back in, sir. What's your name? David Blackwell. You English? No. I'm American. You came a long way for nothing, son. How did you get on the beach? A boat. All right. What kind of boat? A skiff. A small skiff. I came in across the reef. It broke up on the rocks. Oh, did it? You're a fool, Blackwell. You never stood a chance. It's too late anyway. I got here first. So, um, you think maybe you got more guts and brains, eh? I can hold my own. Would you like to prove it? How? I could sign you on with Kruger Brent. They're taking me off to prison. Just answer the question. Sure. What have I got to lose? What do you think, Mike? Not much. I'll sign him up. Who is he? The name's James McGregor. He happens to own Kruger Brent. Mrs. Tully. I'm Margaret von der Merve, and I've come to bring Mr. McGregor his son. Son? Mr. McGregor has no son that I know of. You can tell him that I'm leaving the child here for a week. No, you can't do that, I'll Mr. Do that. Oh, but one oh! week from today. <laughs> no, no, no. What are you doing now? Oh! No, come back. Uh, will you wait? Wait. His name is Jamie. Jimmy. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Tally. This is Tally. What the devil's good? can see it's a baby. What's it doing here? A woman that brought him here and left him here today. She said he was your son. I have no son. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Get out of here. Mr. McGregor. Get out of this house. Mr. McGregor, I've already tried to, Mr. McGregor. You see, you were out of town all afternoon, so I made a few inquiries. They said the child's mother had left Cliff Drift and wouldn't be back for a week. Where does she go? I don't know, sir. <laughs> How could you be so stupid to take in a baby that... I had no choice, sir. The baby's helpless. Someone has to take care of him. <laughs> All right. You were the one that so generously took it in. You can take care of it. Him. 
Yes, sir. And I don't want to know it's in this house. You keep him out of my sight. <laughs> Stop that fallen! Yes, sir. I don't believe in half measures, Mr. Hiller. I want a rail line from Namib to the R. Whoever controls the rail transport controls the heartbeat of Africa. This is Ty! Coming, sir. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> I don't have to do that all by himself. <laughs> it's extraordinary. I mean, the way that decanter. Oh, Mr. McGregor, I'm sorry. I, I thought the baby was in the pantry with me. Mrs. Tally, uh, how do you. How do you pick him up? Why? Under the arms. Very solid. Sturdy man, all right, no doubt about it. It really is extraordinary. I mean, the decanter wears almost as much as he does. <laughs> And this tally, um, I want you to get them uh, some rattles or something. Got them breaking up the furniture. Yes, sir. There. That's enough of that. Hush. What's that? Where was I? Oh, yes. This railroad, Mr. Hiller. <laughs> Oh, aye, that's grand. Look, Jimmy. So, Mike, keep him company. Oh, I hope he didn't waken you with his crying last night. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, there we are. Do you not look a little pale to you, Mrs. Talley? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGregor, all babies are pale. Here. What? I'm just going to make a wee pot of tea. That's for you. It's in your eyes. <laughs> You're a McGregor, all right. This may come as a surprise to you, but uh, I want my son. Doesn't surprise me at all. Of course you want him. I never doubted it. Yes, well, uh, I'll see to that he's brought up properly. He'll have every advantage I can give him. And I'll see to that you're taken care of. What did that mean? A monthly paycheck starting right now. Where is he? Mrs. Tally! Here you are. No, I'm sorry, that won't do. What do you want? I want our son to have a name, his father's name. Very well, and I'll adopt him. No. No, I would never, never allow that. Look, uh, I think you need a little time to think this over. Oh, Jane! Oh, Mummy! My 
Why don't we? Why don't we? There's sit nothing down and talk more about? to discuss. Yes, babe. Come on, we're going to have. Margaret. 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 It's my last offer. Fifth of all Kruger Brent Holdings. No. Not without our son. You think you can force me to it, eh? Don't you know? Nothing's changed. I still love you. Ladies and gentlemen, please board the train. The train is about to be done. Are you? No. Damn you! Goodbye, Jamie. James Elbert McGregor, take this woman as your wife. I do. Place the ring on her finger. May you both prosper in each other's love under God. I now pronounce you man and wife. Close the Harrison deal yet, Mac? Well, I had the feeling that perhaps. Excuse me, Mr. McGregor. I'm sorry, Mac. I... I think if you were to wait just another two weeks for Harrison, you'd get a much better price. I. Mac? Oh, I think he's right. Hmm. And what's your considered opinion of young Blackwell here? In front of him? No secrets. Well, in many ways, it reminds me of you. Oh, is that good? If you'll excuse the profanity. He's bloody good. Well, from now on, he's working directly under you. Thank you, Mr. McGregor. You'll find Max a crafty old codger, but he's dead honest with me. And I expect nothing less from you. You understood? Yes, sir. Understood. To the groom. To Kruger Brent. He had all the furniture imported from London. Must have cost him a fortune. And he has two Arabian horses in the stables that are... Oh, excuse me. Good night, Mrs. McGregor. No, don't go. I want you both to hear this, so there'll be no mistake about it. As far as the child is concerned, he will be Mrs. Talley's responsibility. You will, of course, be allowed to see him when it is not inconvenient. But I will not allow any visitors. That specifically includes Madam Agnes and her employees. Mrs. Talley here will see to it that everything is done for your comfort. You may dine before or after me, but I don't see why we should spend any more time with each other, and it's absolutely necessary. Is that perfectly clear to both of you? Town of proposals locked up till I hear from Paris. Very good, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Get out. 
Bruder mal Geld. You, suit, tie. I no longer work for the white man. Did you get your farm? Farm, wife, two children. I grow wheat and ostriches. The feather brings in good money. Oh, I must look into it. I'm told that the Dutchman has killed himself. Yeah. Terrible thing. Tragic. You've kept your promise. And you? You're a farmer now? No, not altogether. Tell me, have you heard of Tengo Jababu? He's a Bantu chief, troublemaker. He does not believe in the saying, Africa for the whites. I'm one of his followers. Does that mean you're spending more time working against the government than raising wheat and feathers? Everything that I have. Contribute to Jababu. Well, hope it doesn't land you in jail. Jimmy, I came here today to warn you. There's going to be trouble for you. There is a man named Zimmerman in charge of the Nabib mine. Yeah, I know him. Very efficient, gets results. The workers fear him. They hate him. And it's getting worse. There could be a terrible riot. I don't know when. It may not come for a long time, but when it comes, there's going to be a lot of blood spilled, black and white. Do you understand me? I'll do whatever has to be done. Good. I will tell them at our next meeting that there'll be no more trouble at the Nabib mine. So, when am I going to see you again? It will not be good for you to be seen with me now. But someday you will come to the farm and meet my family. Well, just say the word. I'll be there. If I'm still alive. Jimmy. I still have your diamond. coming up now from the lower levels. He's been talking to the natives. Bloody fool. What are we going to do about... If he should see him... Cut him down. Get him at the back. Oh, Mr. Blackwell. I uh, trust you found everything satisfactory? Thank you. I did not, Mr. Zimmerman. In fact, there's very little that I did find that was satisfactory. So you believe these dumb kaffirs who would lie to their own mothers? Pigsties. These men have to live in. Don't lie. I want them cleaned up. Immediately. And there will be no more physical punishment of any kind. Is that clear? How can you hurt a bloody native? <laughs> 
<laughs> These workers will be paid the same wages that the workers in the other mines are paid. So you don't want me to save you money? I want you to make these changes. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself looking for a job with a different company, Mr. Simmons. Good day. Eight Londoners. How they love the natives. Curse them all. Blacks were put on earth by God to serve us. And nobody's going to alter that. What are you going to do? Profits. That's all they want. Nothing else means a thing. And who gives them profits? Me? Why? Because I put the fear of God in those bloody blacks. So, a little border. Oh, careful in the future, eh, maybe? <laughs> Anybody who talks will never talk again. I will show them who's still in charge in Namib. This is Talib. Mrs. Tully! Mrs. Tully, what's keeping you? He'll be right there. Well, get him downstairs. I'll be waiting in the carriage. You mind your papa now. You do what he says. Can't you go to London with us? Well, I'm... I'm afraid not. You just think of all those wonderful things you're going to see there. You won't have time to miss me. I will, I will too. He's waiting for the boy, Miss Margaret. Baba, my sweet. I love you. Come on now. the major assets of Kruger Brent, with diamonds and shipping being the most profitable. The total assets at the present moment, well, as you can see, are amount to quite a tidy sum. All right, Jamie, so when you sit in here, head of the table. Gentlemen, let's take a look at these new holdings, shall we? Now, I'm not very happy with the uh, investments here. I think the level's a bit high, don't you? There we were, in the same room as the, uh, the head of De Beers Kimberley Mines. And he says to me, I've been looking at your operations. How much do you want for your company? Before I could speak up, sweet Jamie here stands up and says, how much do you want for yours? <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you anything about Kruger Brent. Anything. Go ahead, tell them what the present composition of the company is, Jamie. There are now 12 companies with the recent acquisition of Hanover Publishing. Four of these 12 comprise the major assets of Kruger Brent, with diamonds and shipping being the most profitable total assets at the present moment. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get the whole game away, eh? <laughs> Our guests have gone. If you have no further use of my services, then I'll retire. You don't have to ask me or tell me. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I think I played my part rather well this evening. 
as always. No one would ever know the truth. Good evening. Oh, well, Maggie. I'll be leaving for Australia the first of the month. Well, uh, I hope you have a very pleasant trip. I'll be taking the boy with me. No. I will not be separated from him again, weeks on end. Now, you just listen to me, madam. I will take my son where I want to take him. When I want to take him, and for however long it suits me to take him, and no one on this earth is going to stop me. I am. If you force me, then I shall simply have to tell the boy the truth. What are you talking about? If he's old enough to recite company profits, then he's old enough to know that you killed his grandfather, and then made sure that the boy was born a bastard in a whorehouse. Careful, I might spill your brandy. Oh, God, do you think I'm frightened of you, Jamie? Why should I be? Surely you don't call yourself a man. You wouldn't know what to do with a woman if you were bloody well forced to it. Shut up! The truth is, Jamie, you lost your manhood the day that boy was conceived. Nobody knows that better than I do. <sighs> now, the company, Jamie. Oh, now, there's something you can really go to bed with, huh? You teach your son that. You teach him how to be a bloody eunuch. Maggie. Maggie.
Mr. McGregor, they're rioting at the Nomib. What? One of the Kaffirs was caught trying to steal a diamond. He cut a, a hole in his armpit to try to hide the stone. Zimmerman caught him, had him flogged. He died. He was 12 years old. I thought we put our stocks off. We did. Zimmerman disobeyed every order we gave him. We I get my hands on it. I doubt that you'll get the chance. I don't think he's still alive. The situation's out of control. Mr. McGregor, listen. I, I, it's really not safe for you to go out there. Try to warn you, Jimmy. Listen to me. Everything that happened here, the floggings, it wasn't my doing. Oh? My orders were disobeyed. Zimmerman got what he deserved, and I promised you that nobody will be punished for this. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. All right, then. Look, I'm going to close down the mine here for three days. In that time, I want the workers to make a list of all their grievances. You bring that to me, and I swear to you that I'll change everything that's wrong here. Is that all? I want the men back at work in three days' time. Mr. McGregor, how can you possibly... Look! We're closed now here, Constable. I've no further need of your services. With all due respect, sir. That's all! Yes, sir. All right, men. Three days. Everyone, everywhere. Someone left a note in his room, but we could not understand it. Every house, every shack, 
every field, every hill, every road, every clump, every gully, and you will not stop till you find them. Well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Jimmy. Where is he? Where is he? There was nothing I could do, nothing. Well, don't you understand? <clears throat> don't you understand? The moment the Bantu boy died on the stake, your son's fate was sealed. They let me bring him here. I put the boy in his room. If you seek revenge, then you'll have to kill the entire Bantu nation. <laughs> It's a massive stroke. Oh. There really isn't much hope that he'll survive for very long. How long? I really can't tell you. I'm very sorry. Thank you. together. But nothing can come but 
between us now. I love you, my darling. The entire estate, including all holdings of Kruger Brent, are left to his son. However, since the demise of James McGregor Jr., all property will now be assigned to his wife, Mrs. Margaret McGregor. The operation of Kruger Brent will be the joint responsibility of Mr. Blackwell and Mr. McMillan. May I, on this uh, sad occasion, offer my own condolences upon Mr. McGregor's untimely death? No. Mein Mann lebt noch. Ich bekomme ein Baby. Jamies Kind. 